Brendan Horan. Mr Speaker, before I start, I'd like to reiterate uh, some of the words of my colleagues about the press. Uh, here we are, Māori Language Week, and they can't get off their backsides and be in that gallery. And yet, this afternoon at two o'clock, they'll be there, they'll be there, clinging on to the to, to uh, the slightest thing they can find. They'll be judging parliamentarians' literacy skills, and you'll see it in the headlines tomorrow. And yet, here we are today, a landmark day in New Zealand's history, where stories are rich. Some stories today are going to be devastating stories. They are a history, the history of New Zealand. But are these foreign paid journalists here? No. And yet on, oh, hey, a really bad idea. I don't care what they print about me. I'm telling you how it is. They should be here. They had warning. This is an important day. And all over New Zealand and indeed in parts of the world, people are actually live streaming this broadcast and watching. And for those people, I think it's important that the stories are told so stories can be heard and understanding given. Katangi te titi, katangi te kaka, katangi hoki a hau, tihei Māori ora. E nga iwi, e nga reo, e nga mana, e nga matawaka, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. E nga rauranga tira mā, ka mihi aki i runga i te karanga o te rā, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, Mr Speaker, I rise on behalf of New Zealand First to support the Marairo ANB Block Settlement Third Reading. This is one of the longest court disputes in our country's history, starting in the 1800s. Three brothers spent around 50 years fighting for thousands of acres of native forest land, some of it confiscated by the government under the guise of unpaid surveying fees and in some cases dubiously bought as records indicate from de different deeds of sale in the 1890s that some of the sellers were as young as one year old. Now that sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? But it's all well documented and sadly much of these happenings are merely a microcosm of what happened all over New Zealand. The three brothers were Wehi Te Ringitanga, Taro Te Ringitanga and Tutaki Ringitanga. And with today's agreement to settle and an unequivocal apology from the Crown, these three tūpuna can now finally rest in peace. The land in question is special for many reasons. Aside from being fertile forestry land, and, and I would add that during the 60s, the Puriroa and Marairoa blocks were the largest supplier of native timber in the world. But it is also the place where Rediahu died. Rediahu was the father of Maniapoto and his older brother Matakori, and also the uncle of Karewa. And therefore, we have the hapu Nati Maniapoto, Nati Matakori and Ngāti Kārewa. Now, as far as settlements go, there is a real generosity of spirit shown by the claimants in settling for 2,500 acres, with 500 hectares of that being gifted back to the Crown for a wildlife corridor between two forestry blocks. And much of the other land there under certain conservation covenants. The financial redress amounts to just over $2 million, with an extra $40,000 set aside for the buyback of two hectares, being the actual area where Rediahu died, which, unbelievably sadly, for all intents and purposes, is now owned by the Chinese owners of the Krefa Farms. However, with the apology, a shift of consciousness is granted 
and affected descendants can now move into a consciousness of self-responsibility and self-determination. This settlement is and has been an extremely complicated journey and New Zealand First congratulates the generosity of spirit of the claimants in settling so that people can truly move forward, Māori and Pākehā together. Mr Speaker, I would also take this moment to acknowledge two of Ngāti Maniapoto's giant tōtara, their komātua, Pirapi Crown, one of the negotiators, and a caretaker of immense knowledge for not only for Tainui but for, for all Māori. And I would also give uh, Pirapi's apology for not being here today. He would if he could, but he is bravely battling cancer. And uh, he's doing OK, but just not well enough to be here today. And uh, I know that he's at home or watching us on, on parliamentary TV right now. The other komatua for special acknowledgement is former Labour MP and Minister Koro Wetere. Koro will probably be embarrassed by this acknowledgement because uh, apart from being cursed with extreme good looks, uh, he is extremely modest. And uh, I want it known that New Zealand owes Koro a debt of gratitude as he was the driving force behind the 1985 change in legislation that allowed treaty settlement claims historical grievances to be heard back as far as 1840. So thanks to, uh, well prior to the, that change, one could only claim back to 1975. So thanks to Koro, historical grievances can truly be heard, shared and accounted for, as well as important history acknowledged and greater understanding between Māori and Fano, Hapu and Iwi and Pākehā granted. Koro cannot be here today as well and I offer his apology as he is over in Perth, Western Australia. But he assures me he is not one of those young people that is gone and not going to return. On behalf of Pūtipri Crown and Koro Wetari and in the spirit of today's kaupapa I will now deliver their waiata. Tenakoto, e fano ma, ku tai mai nei, i tenera, nore ra ra, e hoa ma, ki ora ra, ko tokato, ku arongo hoki o, ku arongo hoki o, ku arongo hoki o. Ke te haere mai koutou, no re ra ra, e whanau ma, ki o ra ra, koutou kato. Nga ri re re ahu te iwi, miringa te kakara te marae, marae ro ta ro te hapu, puki mai ko iti nga whenua, tēnā koutou kato. The Honourable Tauhanarei. Uh, 